Hello and welcome to U News Weekly's fourth edition, coming to you from the UN Information Office in Uzbekistan in cooperation with all nine UN agencies working in the country. Today we are happy to inform you about the most important new news of the outgoing week in Uzbekistan. I'm Laila Fotuk and I'm Bobo Komilov. Welcome to the show. Welcome. So coming to you in this program, the global pandemic of violence against women and girls thrives in a culture of discrimination and impunity. We must speak out. Ban Ki-moon calls for a better protection of women's rights and gender equality in his message on One Billion Rising campaign. UN Women is the United Nations entity dedicated to gender equality and the empowerment of women. The agency supports the United Nations member states as they state global standards for achieving gender equality and works with government and civil society to design laws, policies, programs and services needed to implement these standards. As part of our Heads Up 2013 series, Damira Sartbaeva, the regional program director of UN Women's Sub-Regional Office for Eastern Europe and Central Asia, talked about the agency's three priorities in 2013. Uh, just we work in rural area to help for rural women to uh, uh, improve their access to economic resources. Tradition of excellence and international awareness. Tashkent School No. 50 holds another Model UN, supported by the UN Information Office. This time's theme, Sustainable Development Goals. Today I've been lucky enough to be a part of the UN model on the topic of Sustainable Development Goals. And finally, what is biodiversity and why does it matter today to educate youth and ourselves on ways to preserve nature's pure self? Today we're joined by Gozal Hojaeva, representative from UNDP, talking about biological diversity and the portfolio the agency has on the subject. So biodiversity for all of us is variety of life forms. It's beginning from very, very small microorganisms or viruses and going through to complex organisms like plants and animals. Launched in 2008, the United Nations Secretary General's Unite to End Violence Against Women campaign aims to raise public awareness and increase political will and resources for preventing and ending all forms of violence against women in all parts of the world. On February the 14th, the Office of the Secretary General uh, of the United Nations in unison with its Unite to End Violence Against Women campaign observed one billion rising at headquarters in New York. And here is the message from the Secretary General on this occasion. The global pandemic of violence against women and girls thrives in a culture of discrimination and impunity. We must speak out. That is why I launched my global Unite to End Violence Against Women campaign. As part of this, I am proud to emphatically raise my voice and join the chorus of all those taking part in the One Billion Rising campaign. But this must be more than a day of advocacy. It must be a day that triggers action. In less than three weeks, at the meeting of the Commission on the Status of Women, the world will gather at United Nations headquarters for the largest ever UN Assembly to end violence against women and girls. Eighteen governments have pledged to come to this historic gathering with new initiatives to stop gender-based violence by improving access to justice, ratifying international conventions, strengthening protection, toughening punishment, and enhancing prevention and education. They are part of UN Women Commit to End Violence Against Women and Girls Initiative. By standing together, we can end violence against women and girls and build a world where all live free from harassment and fear. This will have benefits that reverberate far beyond the affected individuals as they become empowered to help create a better world. The United Nations focuses on gender equality and women's empowerment not only because it's a human right, but also because they are a pathway to achieving the Millennium Development Goals. As part of our Heads Up 2013 series of the United Nations Information Office in Tashkent, this week we were joined by uh, Damira Sardbaeva, who's the Regional Programme Director of UN Women's Sub-Regional Office for Eastern Europe and Central Asia. And she talked to us about the agency's three priorities in 2013. 
Jo andimen sub regional office uh, for Eastern Europe and uh, Central Asia works in uh, Uzbekistan in three false directions. And uh, first direction is economic empowerment of women. Uh, and we are uh, just our focus vulnerable groups of uh, rural women. Uh, just we work in rural area to help for rural women to uh, uh, improve their access to economic resources. It is financial credit, it is uh, just business, uh, uh, business opportunities, and also business development, and also business management. And uh, we, are, uh, we are very happy that we are working uh, with a Women's Committee of Uzbekistan, uh, which undertaking just our uh, approach of community mobilization. Uh, community mobilization and it is very successful that uh, just women coming into self-help groups working collectively uh, to get uh, credit. Uh, just another uh, big our appreciation to National Bank of uh, Uzbekistan which providing uh, uh, microcredits to women uh, with three uh, percent of interest rate. Also uh, just our major focus on CEDAW implementation in Uzbekistan and uh, we are supporting uh, civil society organizations, women's committee and also some state organizations to implement, uh, to implement uh, CEDAW in Uzbekistan. And uh, especially we are very happy that uh, Uzbekistan has national plan for implementation of CEDO concluding comments and uh, we are uh, providing technical advice, we are providing financial support uh, just for implementation of these CEDO concluding comments. Another one, uh, very interesting initiatives, it is, uh, uh, it is implementation of uh, women economic empowerment principles into private business. It is uh, our uh, just uh, very interesting, innovative, I think, uh, in Uzbekistan uh, initiatives on uh, social, uh, increasing social responsibility of uh, uh, private business uh, just uh, for gender equality uh, promotion. I think it's, it would be very interesting. Uh, it will bring some very interesting results. I can tell that uh, yes, uh, we are working, helping to private business on uh, getting some gender awareness uh, and uh, also, uh, also providing technical advice for them uh, to uh, undertake and develop some uh, gender sensitive provisions, especially uh, in practices and policies. I hope it will just bring big success, uh, success uh, for uh, women of uh, Uzbekistan. As the world is deciding on its sustainable development goals, the younger generation all over the world is taking a lead on this by organizing roundtables and seminars. The Tashkent School No. 50 has a tradition of international awareness and particularly holding its very own home model UN seminars. This week, the seminar shifted its traditional focus from the Millennium Development Goals to Sustainable Development Goals. Our very own Nigina Haitva went to the school to talk to the teachers and the students to discuss the outcomes, the ideas and the results of the seminar. Let's listen in. Today, we had a wonderful opportunity to hold this model United Nations conference. Three generations of the school's graduates participated in it. Our school number 50 has this tradition to carry out the MUNs and we are very proud that it is one of the biggest achievements of the school. These conferences help to open new skills and talents in children. Our pupils enjoy acting with their speech, where they always introduce their personal opinion based on the position of the country which they represent. Moreover, they are also fond of discussing the most important issues and debating with their fellows on global questions. They work hard in searching for the necessary information and visit various consultations in order to learn more on the chosen topic. All these factors positively affect the development of the children. Uh, today in school number 50 was model UN conference on topic SDGs. I was the representative of the Republic of Uzbekistan. The conference was very interesting and, and productive for us. Today I've been lucky enough to be a part of the UN model on the topic of sustainable development goals. For me, that was not the first time I, uh, I participated. 
I have been an active member of the UN model at my school for many years and though I have graduated already, I'm keeping on participating in this amazing event. Today we had a special meeting and for me it was quite unusual because that was uh, absolutely another type of the UN model. I've never participated in such model before and for many of my uh, fellows it was uh, strange as well. But I think we showed our best at discussing such economical, social and ecological problems and I, I do believe that those decisions that we have taken today will have to reform and improve our modern society because it is in the need of rehab. And I also do believe that this model is really, really helpful to the, to the younger generation. It helps us to become a better diplomat, to become a better human beings. It is the first step on the way to reach a sustainable future, where people do their best to find better solutions to the world's burning issues. Nigina Haitova, UNews Weekly. Mainstreaming biodiversity into Uzbekistan's oil and gas sector policies and operations is a very innovative and progressive sphere of the country these days, I think, Lalo, don't you? Absolutely, I agree. It'll be great to invite a guest who will be talking about what is biodiversity and how through UNDP we are integrating this concept into, for instance, the operations of oil and gas in Uzbekistan. Exactly. So it's now very high time for a special guest section. So our special guest is Ms. Guzal Khajaeva, who is the Program Associate of the Energy and Environment Unit of the UNDP. Welcome to our studio, Guzal. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Hey. Uh, our first question is, uh, is the topic itself. It's biodiversity. And I've been looking at the profile and there's huge and overwhelming amount of information. And there is a, quite an impressive portfolio of uh, things you've done so far and the things you've been planning to do. Uh, but to start it off in a fairly neutral point, could you just tell us, what biodiversity is in itself. Okay, Lilo and Babur, thank you for inviting me for such an interesting um, discussion. And I think today is the most interesting topic because we are going to talk about life and organism which lives. So by, well, um, understanding the importance of conservation of biological diversity, Uzbekistan in 1995 has signed Convention on Biological Diversity. Mm. And since then, a lot of work has been done in the country itself and outside. And Convention is giving uh, its own definition of biological diversity. Oh. And here today, I would like to talk a little bit in a simple words. So biodiversity for all of us, it's variety of life forms. It's beginning from very, very small microorganisms or viruses and going through to complex organisms like plants and animals. So biodiversity is basically life. It's everything that's around us. Yes, it does. It's around us and it's promoting um, our health, first of all. And it's giving our, us to a food and also other supplements in our life. So how can UNDP support this biodiversity? What do you do? Uh, UNDP had been working a lot in this area and still continuing its work. For six years, UNDP, together with uh, global environment facilities and the government of Uzbekistan, had been implemented um, a project on conserving Tugai forest. It was also a very interesting experience for all of us. And I am emphasizing this project because it's resulted in forming establishment of first biosphere reserve in our country which responds to all requirements of civil strategy, which was adopted in 1995. So this biosphere reserve is where located? It's located in Karakalpakstan. At the moment, UNDP, together with government mm -hmm. and global environmental facility, is conducting free projects. And, and these projects are being carried out in cooperation with national partners. Exactly, and exactly. Right? Only together with our government partners. Mm -hmm. This is the one of the important aspects of our work that the government is in interest, interested in its um, and in meeting its 
commitment under mm-hmm. the convention. I could imagine because, you know, Uzbekistan is such a big country in the Central Asian region Absolutely. and we've got a very rich biodiversity in nature and everything, all the things you've mentioned that, you know, that live and breathe and also uh, serve as an important supplement to our, us, you know, people living in this land. So I think our exactly. listeners will be interested, Bob, uh, to hear from Guzal on where exactly are we integrating biodiversity, in which sectors? Yeah. First, at the beginning of our work, we have been working exactly on conserving, only conserving biological diversity which uh, placed in our country. But smoothly, we are moving to toward integ- uh, cross-sectoral issues and we are covering now the development together with conservation. And one of the best examples of such a collaboration and integration, the biological conservation issues into the development like oil and gas development. It's one of the major sector development in our country at the moment, as you mm-hmm. probably already mm-hmm. know. And at the moment we are running um, an interesting project. It's very complex it, and it's also very unique. Integration of biological diversity conservation principles into the oil and gas sector of Uzbekistan. It's called like that. And um, it is a unique project in Central Asia region uh, and the first project which have been initiated mm-hmm. in a whole cis country and the, the second similar project is run by Russia and they are working on the wetlands and mm-hmm. they are not involved in the oil and gas sector so uh, therefore I think it is uh, particular significant for our country mm-hmm. The pilot site of this project is Plateau Usturt and uh, it devoted to conserve steppe biome. Mm-hmm. It means our steps, mm-hmm. simply saying. And it is the main it's main the project's the main goal of the project mm-hmm. is to integrate conservation principles into the operation of oil and gas companies, which simply saying means that Obviously, mm-hmm. companies have to start to think what is the impact or influence they are performing on the environment and on biodiversity in particular. Taking responsibility. Absolutely. So they're becoming conscious of that biodiversity conservation is important. Mm-hmm. Now we need to think of how the oil and gas companies could be so responsible and how they can perform the activities with the less impact or with compensating the impact. Okay. In order to do so, the, the present project is offering to the government to reconsider their regulations, the government of regulations in the frame of laws, mm-hmm. how to integrate the very important and very popular at the moment and very um, practicing principles or principle of avoid, reduce, remedy and offset which simply says that probably after the influencing the environment, the companies were supposed to do the offset, implement offset scheme. Mm-hmm. That's mean that they will, will revitalize mm-hmm. distracted environment of biodiversity. Mm-hmm. And one of the, another important thing which a project can probably help to our government is to reconsider the procedures of conducting environmental impact assessment. So this is obviously very connected processes among each other. Guzal, I'm sorry, if I, if I have to interrupt you here, I would just like it just on behalf yes. of our listeners and viewers, because uh, some of the terms that you're using are quite technical. Yeah. And uh, Procedures for evaluation of impact. environmental impact assessment. assessment. In, in our country, we call it AVOS. Okay. And... To someone who hasn't ever heard of UNDP and what that procedure means in oil and gas is so far away from my everyday life, for example. So how would you put that into simple words? What does that assessment entail? What what does it include? What is it? This is a procedure Mm -hmm. which any industry development Mm -hmm. supposed to pass. Mm -hmm. And it's happening on regular basis. Mm-hmm. So See, it's, a, it's a formal procedure? It is formal proje- okay. procedure and um, it is evaluating 
the level of impact of okay. the industry okay. to the environment. So how much harm it's bringing exactly. to the uh, surrounding world and environment that we live in. Not only environment, maybe to the human health as well. Okay, okay, to the air we breathe and, yes. and everything. Now I think it's, it's better. It's clearer now, yeah? <laughs> All right. Yeah, and I also would like to mention that the project is uh, have been already implementing for two years and managed to obtain several very valuable results. Mm -hmm. First of all, I would like to mention that it is uh, the uni uh, the complexity of the projects of this project is that 19 ministries, departments, organizations are working together now. So and they are representing different sectors. Okay. Not only let's say protecting the nature committee or oil and gas companies. Mm -hmm. So it's also involves any uh, all other committees, ministries, departments, agencies who would indirectly mm -hmm. will be implementing this kind of activity. So basically How? everyone is taking responsibility for, in terms yeah. of co biodiversity conservation. Yes. Just to clarify it, is it because they are their work is relevant in a sense to the conservation of biodiversity, or is it because you know everyone all of a sudden agreed to take a collective responsibility for for our common environment? Well, I think uh, it is both mm -hmm. uh, because every min ministries and agencies, environmental agencies, obviously having their goals. However, some goals are overlapping. Okay. And also, sometimes the activities also overlapping. In order to ex escape this and restruct, uh, structuralizing all the yeah. activities which will be implemented in the country, that mutual uh, collaboration and work of these uh, and agencies, I think, would be more productive and more efficient. Now comes a very logical question. Is biodiversity conservation profitable for oil and gas? How are they in, uh, involving? How, how are they involved in this? Well, I think they, uh, they directly depend on this because gas and oil is its natural resource. Mm -hmm. And in order to extract them, in order to identify them, they need them. They need exactly. the other, uh, other components of biodiversity or, or ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So it's a one big system which helps to form certain resources to be available for the human life and development. So, Guzal, this is very interesting. Uh, tell us uh, which oil and gas companies are partnering with UNDP on this. Well, certainly they are key partners to this project and uh, they are working with five major operating oil and gas companies in Uzbekistan, such as Uzbek Neftegas, Lukoil, Kogangas and etc. Great. So there are uh, a wide variety of companies working in Uzbekistan. Yeah, the stakeholders are quite... So now let's go down to the ground. Uh, what has been done during these past two years? Tell us uh, the activities you've done in Ustyur Plateau. <laughs> yes, thank you, Lilo, for such an interesting question. And um, I'm particularly interested in uh, these kind of questions because I'm very proud of what projects have been already done for these two years. And first of all, it had prepared a lot of uh, 160 amendments and changes to the law, to wow. the eight law. 160? Hundreds, no, 106. 106. Yes, 106. And also uh, 90 uh, changes and amendments to the OVOS mm -hmm. procedure. And also they have um, formed the interagency working group where 90 ministries and uh, departments and agencies are involved in implementing the project. Also, very significant um, results have been obtained on the monitoring biodiversity um, of the Ustur Plateau. There are two expeditions have been taken and the re uh, great results were obtained. Uh, also, the project has prepared a map of Ustur Plateau with three different zones, which differs on the allowance of operation of oil and gas companies in the area. And also a very interesting result, uh, which I would like uh, to emphasize, especially because our national partners um, drawing a particular att attention to this is uh, reorganization of Saigachi Zakaznik or management area. And the package of documents had been already prepared and submitted to the government for their final approval. Uh, 
And uh, one more, maybe a very interesting and very unusual and very unique result have been uh, done by the project. They produced a cartoon. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it's called Antelope Step Tail. Wow. And I That's... hope soon everybody would be lucky to know and to see this cartoon. So biodiversity, not just in oil and gas and sector, but even for little children as well. Yes, it is. Uh, however, it's still, it's still um, having the main goal of understanding what might be influence of human development, human um, activities, human life on the components of all components of biodiversity. That's a very exciting um, portfolio of outcomes and results, Guzal. And I'm certainly looking forward to that cartoon and my little nephew will definitely love it, I'm sure. And it will be a good way of introducing him so. to this sort of a, of, a, of a commitment that UNDP takes in, in Uzbekistan. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So with this, we bring the fourth edition of U News Weekly to an end. Absolutely. It was so great to have Guzal with us today. And all the other mix of stories that this week has witnessed. And we'll have more stories and developments coming to you from the UN family in Uzbekistan. To stay in touch and to find out more about these stories and other stories of the week, please visit www.un.uz on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Unique Tashkent. Thank you very much. From me and my colleague Lilo, it's goodbye.